Welcome everybody to the Wednesday, April 10th meeting of the Conway Select Board at 6.30 or thereabouts. Um, it will become a joint meeting with the Conway Finance Committee. The meeting is being recorded live on FCAT and on this OWL on Zoom for the town website. If for any reason these recordings cease to function, the meeting will continue live and in person. I'll call the meeting to order. First item, vote to approve the minutes of March 25 and April 1st. I looked over both, they both look good. I, I will make a motion to approve both meeting minutes. Okay. I'll second that motion. Now, I just want to say, Adam, those meetings, the minutes are really good. They are. It's a difficult thing to get good. Okay. Um, yeah, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Erica, the minutes? Okay. Thumbs up. She can't hear you. Oh dear. Can you hear us, Erica? I cannot. I can't hear anything. Okay. You okay with the minutes? Did you get that? How, how can you? You heard Veronique right there. Well, you mumble. I mumble? I heard Veronique. I didn't, yeah, I didn't. Veronique was the first. Yeah. Um, yes. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yes. <laughs> okay. A reminder for us to speak up. All right. So there was a motion and a second for both minutes. All right. All in favor? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We, we, we already Aye. voted. Okay. Aye. Very good. It's unanimous. So the warrants, there's three warrants. An accounts payable warrant in the amount of $79,657.20. A payroll warrant in the amount of $148,395.18. And the payroll deduction warrant in the amount of thirty-seven thousand thirty-six dollars and twenty-six cents. I did review all of these. There's just nothing conversationally noteworthy about any of them. They're just the most rote and routine set of warrant or we could ever hope to get. I had one question, and Veronique answered it for me. So oh, there you go. The, the you know which one? The thousand dollars for the oh right right, right. two thousand dollars, and it was Parks and Rec right Parks and Rec right. yes yep. So, um, so I'll move to approve the three warrants. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, uh, meetings attended by select board members. Chris. We had an executive session. We did. I think that's. I think that's it. Erica, we have a few weeks. Um, yeah, the executive session yesterday. Was that last week that we had the the, the Bardwell's Ferry Bridge with yes, the Mass DOT? We, yeah, we were all at the Bardwell's Ferry <laughs> Mass DOT scoping meeting, which lasted like an hour and a half, two hours. All I really wanted to find out was when are they going to start and when right, are they going to yeah. finish. <laughs> and at the very end of it, they told us, Ooh, I don't know. Um, so that was. <laughs> That was, but they, there was one person in there that kept on trying to say over and over again, we're, we're really going to do this as quick as we can. We really need to get this done. So I appreciated that. Um, and well, there were also like 40 people in that meeting. Yeah, so yeah, that I was, felt like there were a lot of people with their eyes on this project. For sure. Um, uh, and, and how much they were, in, they were looking forward to working on it, the historic nature of the bridge and how beautiful the location was. They were all just like, this is a great project be a part of so um, and uh, um, Veronique and I met with Tim Fortier and we saw him moving the bench today that was a feat that, that was really something else because all the, those two companies that we had they couldn't move the bench it was um, but it got moved and they cut the trees um, and uh, yeah so um, public comment. So the only item on new business, well, besides the review of the draft warrant, which will take the balance of the evening, is a discussion and possible vote on the GZA proposal for hydraulic engineering study in the Pine Hill, Upper Baptist Hill, Baptist Hill, and Emerson Hollow Road area um, to be paid out of the $1.425 million uh, supplemental state appropriation to the town of Conway for flood-related expenses. Um, and Rosalie Starvis is here from GZA, and so is Nate. 
um, what was your last name? Russell. Russell, sorry. Um, Nate's sitting right next to me. I still forgot his name. Um, last name. But um, so, uh, you know, I, 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 we saw the proposal. Do um, you have anything to <coughs> just, I guess, talk about it a little bit? And uh, Yeah, I mean, Rosalie, I, uh, you're here. We can answer any questions you might have about sort of what we think we're proposing to do and what the implications could be. I mean, obviously the, the study is there, the intent is to sort of figure, try to help figure out how much water we have to deal with and what some options could be to help deal with that water that's coming off the hillside. Um, you know, it's a preliminary engineering study and coming up with some conceptual ideas for how to try to move water around in a way that would benefit the town or the, the residents of that area. We're currently being affected by runoff, and, and I will say we've been getting a lot of these types of calls in this last couple of years. Right? This is not, and it's no, it's no solace to someone who's dealing with this problem personally, right? But we, this is not an uncommon situation. It seems lately where there's a lot of water, and it seems that it's showing up in places that perhaps in the past it hasn't, or at least hasn't been observed, right? Whether or not. 40 years ago or 50 years or 100 years ago, there, was, there were issues, who knows, but you know, recently we're going through a period now where we're seeing a lot more of this. And, um, you know, sometimes it's hard to determine what is, it, there's often no singular cause, right? It's often a, a whole combination of factors that got to this point, and the solutions are often the same, right? It's not necessarily just one thing that we can do or, or the town could do or a resident could do to address it. It's, it's a combination of things we can try to implement as a, as a collective whole to address it and mitigate it as much as we can. So I don't know if, uh, if you guys have any, if the town has any questions about what we're looking to do or you know, if we can provide any more details. I'd actually pulled up Lori's email, but since she's here. <laughs> well, and what was in my email was a uh, Landscape School of Design report from mm -hmm. 1975. Sure. And like I've read the proposal, which we, which I'm assuming is a contract with the town. It's yes. a proposed service. So yeah. therefore, the kinds of questions that I'm asking are kind of, to some degree, contractually related. Mm -hmm. um, so you have the end, the study point from July, and there were three major changes in the Baptist Hill Road area since the July flood. And each of those changes altered the flow pattern of the water. Mm -hmm. So if you only go by July, you're already at a date. Mm -hmm. And should this not be all the way the My sump pump has run steadily since December 18th. It goes every 10 minutes. And if not, we've only, like, I, like you can look at the rain flow map. And we haven't hit the kinds of tropical rain at two inches an hour density that the summer rainfall mm -hmm. delivers to us. I have no idea what's going <laughs> to happen in my basement, given that at what where we're at, it, and I'm assuming, like, you know, that data is pertinent to um, how you do those hydraulic and Hydrologic. <laughs> I have to go really slowly on those two words. We abbreviate the HH you know, to make it easier. The, the, <laughs> HH, the HH combo. Yeah. Um, so, so, that, so, my, so, like, I have a whole list here of, of ideas. So, that speaking just that to sort just of seems important. The conditions today versus July or whatever. So, the intent would be to go out now and assess mm -hmm. the current conditions. So, we'd be looking at what the conditions are today. To, us to develop our network of, so when we prepare this model, right, we look at the, hydro, the hydrologic conditions, that's the rainfall and runoff patterns and the hydraulic performance. So where is that water ultimately getting to? How is it being collected? Where is it concentrating? Is it getting to catch basins and pipes? Is it flowing over land? Are there common discharge points? Is it overflow? Does it back up in certain ways? And so we're gonna to attempt to model the existing network as we understand it today. And I'll be going out with Ron and his crew to identify where the existing pipes are, where the catch basins are, trying to understand what the road, I understand that have been out there, the road currently isn't in final condition, right? They cut it down, they milled, 
and there's some sort of berms on the sides that keep the water in it currently, and that's not the condition it's going to be, and it's probably not the right condition to consider when we're looking at where we think water will end up. It would be more of a final condition for the road being reconstructed, repaved. Mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately, it's, it's sort of to try to figure out, again, where the water's really going, and then are there opportunities to affect change to that that would reduce you know, are, are there pinch points? You know, are there constrictions yeah. in the system? And where are they? And what can we do to try to alleviate that to the extent we can and move that water around? Are you only looking at storm water or are you looking at groundwater as so, well? Yeah, so we are not currently proposing to do a hydrogeologic assessment. It says in here there's a Oh, you're saying hydrogeologic. So hydrogeologic. So we, that would be like installing groundwater wells and monitoring the groundwater conditions over time. Mm -hmm. That's not in our, in our purpose. Because the problem on much of what's happening is actually ground, at this mm -hmm. point, the groundwater uh, table is so high that it's a groundwater in addition to stormwater mm -hmm. problem. If you only look at stormwater, you don't understand what has what has happened at the seep plane level across the hill um, that that comes down to River Street mm -hmm. from Baptist Hill. So I like uh, that's a like that's a pretty serious omission I would think to not look at the groundwater um, and there's a lot of help to look at the groundwater because the I've talked to more than one landowner and there are landscape school of design maps for different parts of the hill which can tell you the geological conditions in a number of places as it may have existed between 1975 and 1995 um, and um, like that is really important to understand why the water moves in a storm in specific ways. It's clay, you know, and that's really different than, for example, the East Hampton Fur Cob uh, Guide to how to deal with storm water and flood because the town of East Hampton is sand. If I, if I, if I could just interject here that this issue of groundwater rising seems to be a statewide phenomenon. Yeah. And on the town website, I've posted a link to a survey that UMass Amherst and the state are asking residents to fill out so that they can get a sense of what's going on because this is, it's everywhere. It's not just yes, I understand in that. this particular neighborhood. So, so what I'm saying though is that to understand what the stormwater is doing without paying attention to where the groundwater, and that is a uh, geological circumstance to a considerable degree. If you don't pay attention to that part of it, it's like missing half the picture. So I, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Right? And as currently envisioned, the scope we put together is specific to surface water, right? Yeah. If the town wanted, we could discuss expanding that scope to include hydrogeologic evaluation. So that would be with things like doing subsurface explorations, so do test borings and similar, to better assess the local superficial geology, right? There are maps available, I understand. I'm a geotechnical engineer by trade. The maps are very useful for broad generalizations. They aren't necessarily great to characterize groundwater flow patterns in unique locations, right, in, lo in localities. So to do something like that would definitely expand the scope of services. And if that, again, if that's something the town would like to do, we're very open to having that conversation. And they aren't necessarily, you can do one or the other or both, and there's value in both, right? So there's information that you will gain. If you ignore one or the other, that's a problem. I don't disagree that groundwater is a thing, but for the time being, you know, the pressing, the short-term issue, what can we readily change quickly? What, what, from a standpoint of where can we affect change, groundwater is a more difficult problem to tackle. So in the short term, if we're already reconstructing the drainage system in that area, we can affect change now and implement that 
during that construction phase, so when they repave the road, we can look at are there enhancements that can be made to alleviate that portion of the issue. Will that solve all of the issues that you're, you know, and other residents are dealing with? I can't say it will, but it does, it is something we can address in the short run, and then we can work with you and the town to address other concerns, and potentially if we do want to expand that scope to look at other considerations that could be impacting the residents. And the, just from the town point of view, um, the one of the hurdles to addressing groundwater through this particular study at this time is the source of funding that we're used. Because by a Department of Revenue opinion, all the, we're limited to public uh, infrastructure, public, the pu public you know, um, repairs to the public property, and uh, in all things storm damage related, but to include um, engineering studies and stormwater management infrastructure. But, um, but it, and I can see how where the two of those, so there, there's an intersection of those, those two topics. Well, when you pour the water into from the, from the roads into a field, and the field's groundwater is so high that it creates long range, months long, sort of a form of flooding to the, it, not simply the field, but into the uh, buildings. Yeah. Um, and that to get rid of that, to help the drainage of that water requires crossing three other properties back to the road. Um, at what point is it, it just seems to me that it is both a, um, you have to understand something about both to understand how to solve one problem effectively. Well, and I think that's what I was hoping to get out of the study that they are doing, that to take a look at the current practices of where the culverts drain to, where, which historically had not been an issue, but which since July are definitely an issue. Um, and to come up with a better, better waste, the better stormwater infrastructure than just discharging it onto a field. So, I mean, that's, that's what we were, I know that's what I personally was hoping to get out of it. Just what, what's the, what can we build as a town? What can we do as a town to make it better? Um, and to, you know, to, to, to make the roads better so that the roads aren't destroyed as easily. Um, and to make, to make it so that when the roads, when there's sheets of water passing over the roads, there's places for the water to go besides into people's fields and homes. So that's, that's. Well, I think I'll end up in fields. The question is in what mode does it end up in the field and from one field to the next field or one ravine to the next ravine? You know, what does it do to geologically to the sides, the soils, the wells, the leaches related? Um, and those are all, I want those all, I would think to some, I didn't know, but I'm at, this is a question. When you talk about non public data or microcosm related data in the very end of the um, uh, contract, um, Lots of people have their reach point, like who in the town, if you want that kind of data, who's the appointed, appointed person to collect it? Is there a process in place by which the non-public data gets to you in a timely fashion and um, uh, so that it can be compiled in an orderly way, that, you, that it's not so last minute that, well, the thing is due, and nobody had time to look at it. Sure. So the, one of the elements of the proposed scope includes a public outreach component, uh -huh. which would include meetings in a setting such as this, probably not a select board meeting, but maybe where you specialize specific meeting to talk with any of the interested parties. It would be advertised, uh -huh. and the goal would be to get everyone together so we can talk about the issues. If you have that information, it would be a sort of call to arms, so to speak, right? Uh -huh. Bring us your data, please. <laughs> Bring us your data such that we can then have that and consider it as part of this overall assessment. I would strongly urge that in that communication that some of the definitions of what, you know, wet and like in the UMass flood survey, 
I asked a couple of, not George, but I asked a couple of other neighbors if how they had filled that out. And if their basements were simply like damper and wetter than usual, they didn't think it qualified as flood-related issue. And it actually does because that's the groundwater being super high and creating dampness in a microcosm environment that didn't exist in the same way 10, 15 years ago. And it's a public education. I don't think that the public understands a whole lot about what a dirt, fieldstone, wet basement that doesn't have old-fashioned gravity drains like it used to um, before leach fields were built. I, I think that some of that public education really needs to be done. And it would answer one of the questions that Ron Sweet brought up, which is how do you share the process? How do you make everybody feel that they come to understand some of what they can do? Because one of the big differences between up here and the water problems and in the valley is it's clay and rock and not sand and it doesn't absorb. So it sheets underneath. So some of those issues will be addressed, we hope, if we get the next MVP grant. There will be a huge public education component to that. There obviously will be public education and outreach for this, but it's more limited to that specific yeah. neighborhood. Okay. But in future, if we do get this grant, it will be the whole town. Okay. And she's referring to MVP, I think, the last public meeting that we went to where Rosalie and Nick were there at the grammar school. At that point, we were considering a DEP section something something grant. A 319. 319 grant. And um, for a bunch of different reasons, we've since are focusing on an MVP grant. So that's why the terminology is different. Yeah, I, I get what the differences are. What is your implementation period? What is like, it said it started, something started in about two weeks if this was signed and approved. But is there a, a, a what is the report period once you start? Rosalie, can you speak to the to our anticipated schedule? Where's the cat in the way? Yeah, they, oh, the, yeah, for, so for this um, initial study, um, you know, we would get started as soon as possible. Um, and, you know, I think it would take, you know, probably three months or so maybe to get through, you know, the, the investigations and then the modeling. Um, I think that might be a reasonable time frame. Um, and then the broader, the broader study with the public outreach component that um, would go forward with an MVP grant. Um, I think we're looking at um, a project that would be completed by the end of um, next June, I think is what we were targeting because the MVP grant has either a one year, you know, a one fiscal year cycle or two fiscal year cycle. And we're going to try to have this be a one year cycle grant. Is there a process if landowners have to act more quickly than that period in order to um, address water issues on their property? Is there a process in place to do that? No, I, I think this is as, as fast as we can move. And I, we don't I even understand. know if we get the MVP grant. We won't know that for a while. Because the application isn't even due till I think it's the 26th of April. So we won't find out until June whether or not we've been granted it, and then we still have to sign the contracts and then get going. So, unfortunately, sometimes government takes a while. No, I understand but, that. But that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, uh, we 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 do have we do have a supplemental state appropriation that we do have latitude within the definition of what we can spend. That's still fairly broad. Um, and, and it's what we're trying, what my hope is that what they come up with are solutions that we can implement ourselves as a town as much as possible without having to rely upon outside private contractors. Um, so, 
Well, as a private landowner, I have to address something in, that goes on in my property related to the drainage before the peak of the hurricane season to come. Mm -hmm. And it will have implications for the entire drainage. And um, part of the reason why, for it, like part of my property I haven't done anything is because I have not known what the town was gonna do next and how they were gonna put anything or not. And like I said, there were three changes since July that have drastically altered the water already. But um, I, I we're, uh, you know, you were raising your hand? Yeah, I just, so you, you just said there are three major changes to the roadway since July that were made. Can yeah. you, which, what are those specifically? Uh, Pine Hill was paved. The road was stripped on Upper Baptist Hill of its surface. The uh, culvert that is kitty corner between the north, the northern eastmost part of the curve of our property, the back uh, to the west, the culvert was opened completely um, and it had been blocked for all 40 years of my living on the property. Where the catch basin is? Well, there's another catch basin that was opened about a year and a half, two years ago, that um, created an outflow from the catch basin, and that flows both backwards onto our property and forward onto the Forcier property. And those have all had, like, the, the, the outflow to the catch basin is a year at least a year and a half two years old but all the other things the paving of pine hill road the changing of the way that they dug out a um a pretty good ditch along the side of it on the to the west side of it um they did open up one but under like from the old side size not the not a wider bigger one um you know, they they addressed some of the pre-existing culverts, but they didn't add any new culverts. So the increase in the volume of the water is now faster than ever into the field, our backfield. And then, like I said, the the there's a culvert that was buried on the corner of the Hardy. It, it's on our property, but but it's right at the corner of the um, Hardy property as well. And then there's a gigantic pile of rock that helps direct the water um, sitting from the paved road sitting in the basin, on the edge of the basin. So that's also a little drainage channel. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so, so my understanding, Rosalie and Nate, is that what, you know, for me, the biggest takeaway of what the product that you're gonna come up with is just a to-do list for us that we can hand to you know the various town departments that can do the work that you know based on data and science that what will help to solve the problem and that's kind of what we were looking that's kind of what I was looking for um, and you know and because the reason that this area is being chosen to go first is because this is the area that has resulted in the most damage for the most people um, and uh, where we think uh, a, 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 an expenditure could help both the town roads and their um, and you know to, to, so that they don't need to be repaired as often and um, in helping the town roads and the town uh, stormwater management infrastructure for those roads, it will have the wonderful side benefit of um, helping the residents to avoid flooding as well. So that's, that's why this got picked first. There are other parts of town that would be nice to address as well, based on a criteria of, a, you know, how many people can get helped at sort of, um, so that's, yeah. George, do you have any, yeah. any questions? No, I'm just here to listen. <laughs> I have a question. Sure. sure. Um, 
Um, so I was curious about the die part of this. Um, I know there were some unanswered questions. Sorry. <laughs> there were some unanswered questions in the FERCOG report that was given to us uh, in October okay. about where the input and the output of various pipes were. Sure. And they, the, one of their recommendations was that dye studies be done. So yep. it wasn't clear from reading your proposal, are you guys going to be doing the dye studies? So we'll be working with the town to do some dye tracing to try to verify hydraulic connections. Okay. Right, so I know in, in that upper corner there's some question about where water goes, right? And so the simple explanation would be basically take dye, it's a, it's a fluorescent green the dye that breaks down, but you flow it in with a lot of water and you watch where it comes out. Mm -hmm. And you can either see it because it is this bright green, you know, people you get complaints, oh, what's going on <laughs> down by the river? But it, it breaks down pretty quickly and it's, it's natural, it's not a not toxic in that way yeah. Um, yeah. but you use fluorescent lights to it glows you know, like, a, like a black light and so you can we can try to see where water is going if we put it in one spot where does it come out right and so that's one tool we use to try to trace that pathway um, there are other options out there if we want to investigate something further there are cameras uh, that can be deployed to actually fall through the system and take video of it as they go. That's not something we have currently in our scope, but if they were about to a juncture, we're trying to figure out what's going on. Okay, water's putting it here and it's coming out there, but geez, we have no clue what's going on in the middle or why right. is it not coming up is the other question that right. sometimes right. come up. Well, we've ordered it here and we're not seeing it here. This is where it should come out and we can't find it yeah. somewhere else. So yeah. where is it going? And that's when yeah. you know, we have a few vendors that we work with that can do that sort of television inspection. Can I, can I ask a question? If you set up a wildlife cam, um, along like a known uh, fluid pathway that's going to come down the slope and then up through the ground because it'll start ponding in like you can time it in six hours. Um, but that's what's happening is like it comes down the hill, across the sheet, then it'll pop up <laughs> ponding in about, it takes about six hours time. If you used a wildlife cam, could you capture that? With the dye study? No, or something? I'm I, I, a wildlife cam is going to be taking yeah. a camera view. Are you are you talking about cameras going underground or cameras through through pipes through the pipes through, through the pipes? Yeah, like okay. a colonoscopy. Okay. Yeah. Through the pipes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, like one, but so a little bit of the same yeah. thing in my head. Trigger warning. Yeah. Yeah. No, through Sorry. the pipes. Without the crap. Uh, I enjoy those. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, through the pipes. Yeah. yeah okay. okay. Yeah. Um, Unfed. So we're trying to look for places where there might be a flaw or a break in a pipe. So, you know, why is the water not making it to where we think it should be based on what we understand should be the pathway it's following? No okay. <laughs> well, Yeah, this, the state came out when they were trying to understand the, the their drainage system on River Street, Main Street, Seraphine Falls Road. They had the chief plumber from the state of Massachusetts with the fancy camera system with the GPS, everything. Mm. They they were rolling that through. Yeah, because you can, like, what I call it is like weeping. Like you can watch the hillside weep mm -hmm. with water. And um, and then there's little, there's the spots for the rivulets. And then there's what I'm describing where, like, exactly where it came in isn't clear. It sheets about six feet away from a particular point, And then it'll start bubbling up. And it's not coming through pipes, though. It's coming through um, dirt and silt and gravel, and um, and it's above a clay ledge. Mm -hmm. It's falling so falling in preference of seepage path, we think. I'm sure it's the seepage yeah. path that that like that's how you can just, you can literally identify it. I mean. Um, And then it'll overflow and, like and, and, you know, like you can, it's totally mappable, it's visible. At this time of year, I, like yeah. later summer, it'll be harder. Yeah. Um. So the other, the other question I had was, you know, how, how will this study be substantially different or um, add to what the FERCOG study had done? It sounded like they had done a pretty good job looking at all the different drainage and... Right, so as I understand, they, they 
they started to map the various drainage networks and look at the likely contributing areas, what we would be doing is sort of verifying that aspect, of it, attempting to verify that, so you know, and adding to that data set, and then preparing an actual hydrologic model for the system. So we would be taking that information, plugging it into, I think program uses SWIM, but essentially a modeling software that looks at the topography, the catchments, the runoff characteristics, models rainfall events, okay. models the runoff, you know, sort of coming down, captured by the system, and models the flow through the pipe. So we can sort of look at, um, you know, there's a lot of assumptions, so this is not, you know, it's, 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 it's scientific, but it's not perfect. But we can, and then we can calibrate that model based on the experience of people saying, geez, you know, when it rained last time, we got two inches and it overflowed here. If we're not seeing that in our model, we can try to look at and say, okay, what's different in our model and try to calibrate that a little bit. But, but basically, we're trying to assess the capacity of the system and where is the water going to go. And then if it is backing up in the drainage system, then where does it overflow to, right? So what, are the, what are the next, what are the spillover effects? So that's the goal of, of this, that aspect of this work is to try to come up with a model that then we can look at potential options to enhance the network or mitigate that issue, right? So is it as simple as making the pipes bigger, right? So, so if the current pipes in the road are 12 inches and we're seeing it's backing up on a regular basis for small storms, does just putting a bigger pipe in make a difference? Well, it makes a difference, but is it the difference that we want it to yeah. make, right? So okay. we would look at those options and what were feasible to do to, to drive the water somewhere else. And of course, part of that is if we put the water somewhere else more quickly, then we have to manage that, right? So just getting the water out really fast isn't always the only, the right answer, right? So there's, there's things we're gonna have to look at and and that's sort of part of that discussion with the town as to what's what's feasible, what's practical, and then there's the other piece, what's permittable. Yeah, right. Okay. So you can put the biggest pipe in the world you want in, but if you're discharging into a wetland causing erosion, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. So, so it's not just the infrastructure; yeah. it's also looking at you know the, the surrounding area, looking at the other constraints that may affect that ability to affect the change. So that 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 is why I asked the question about process for private landowners. Like, this may be a long time, if, but that because it's a government grant, it's going to require. But if you need to act before that period in order to preserve the um, safety of a structure that you live in, how, what, uh, like, how do we communicate and share knowledge in a way that um, is useful for all? Yeah, and I, I was thinking about that too. There already is. Uh, I know Ronnie could put together an email list of the 27 homes or something like that, and I think that that's a good start as a basis to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and the. Um, yeah. I mean, you can even you do things. I mean, I, I once worked on, as a communications director for when the Franklin Regional High School needed every single town to vote yes. Like, like, you know, I think that you, there are ways to share documentation of what's going on and why it's so dangerous and difficult. There's, <coughs> there's going to be nothing but faster water mm -hmm. if we have four and five inch rains um, in a row. It's not going to get slower down here. And well, it might because of what the state did between um, Cindy and um, Phil's house. But from what my part of the hill looked like, it was a flowing river. And um, all I can tell you is that that river's faster now than it was. And we haven't had the four to five inch really dense, it's in two hours, it's coming down at tropical hurricane speed. Well, I, I guess I would say what we're doing here is trying to move as quickly as we can to get this information. Information sharing will be part of the process of this right. work. I, mean, I, I just think that, that I find the, that, that the talk back and forth doesn't happen in my experience 
until the very last minute and that it would be really helpful to not leave that communication to 48 hours before the meeting. That there might be really valuable dialogue that could go on and not wait to the last minute. I know that everybody's time is extremely stressed and pressed, but that's true of everybody in every imaginable kind of way almost all the time. Um, so we'll, I think that the communication related to this stuff and the gathering of documents could, could be more, um, more formalized and, and timed in such a way that it would guarantee that you got documents back that it would create a kind of understanding of the, of the different terms being used across the larger population. And we need that. Like I said, the geological information of the 20 acres of the hill exists in huge chunks already if the landowners who have those documents cooperate with you. But you have to, get, you have to really get them. <laughs> so, I mean, that is the task ahead. Yeah. I, I think that and the way to approach that, as I see it, is just sort of step by step. Rome wasn't built in a day. Just do, you know, and that the, the FERCOG study was a great place to start that identified a lot of the issue. The FERCOG study specifically called for this kind of study as the next step. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then this study would allow us to begin the shovel in the ground, like fixing stuff, next step. Um, but in between the completion of this study and where we're at right now, this you know it would be a lot of communication. There's because you and others have a lot of valuable information that could assist the engineers um, in you know because the more information they have, the better their decisions are informed, um, and the better their recommendations are informed. And I think. You know, that's what this is all about. So I, I, I don't know. I think okay. I think this is a good thing. I don't know. I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm looking I, ahead. I'm, I, and I, I, you know, with with work that has to be done in the next it, few there months. There is, there you is. You know, that is going to like that. That I that I, you know, I'll share the data of what needs to be done. Like and, and the, you know, there might be a better way to go about it. I don't quite know what that better way would be but um but i also think that this is a good way to go about it i don't i don't know i try not to let the potential perfect be the enemy of the known good um so i don't uh you know i don't know i think i you know we put this on the agenda as a possible vote i kind of would like to just go ahead and vote i don't i mean it just get it started we I, I hear what Lori is saying too. Is, you know, looking for recommendations to the homeowners to help because they can't wait a year for the work to be completed. But I also know that's a challenge because each property probably has its own unique problems based on the property above or below the road. You know, is it right next to where Pine Hill is, where all that water is sheeting down? Um, and that's, that's probably going to be a big challenge as far as communication. I mean, we can obviously do our part. It's a good thing for neighbors to talk with each other, saying, hey, it's very important that you know that this is happening and provide the information that you have for the assessments as well, mm -hmm. especially in a neighborhood like Baptist. Well, if this gets voted tonight, I will certainly email it to the group so that everybody will be at least starting out right on the and we have town meetings. And I would suggest if they have, like, I would give a kind of list of what kind of documents can you let that a landowner, private owner, if they care to share with them, with the town, that would be useful for them to under, get a grasp of where the geological information is. Just because some of it's really at the tip of the surface and easy, very easy to obtain. Yeah. But if you don't ask, if it, you got to ask. Maybe we get in the currents. And then, yeah, or, or in the current. No, there's if a couple. We know of somebody who has an in with the recorder, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there were a couple of, there was a couple of homeowners in this group besides Lori that have accumulated valuable data over the years in the form of reports from 
the Conway Landscape School and others that would be useful to the engineering team putting this together. E um, even knowing where the depth of, a we of all the wells are <laughs> tells you where the ledge is. Because somebody might have like a 35 foot uh, depth and somebody else might have a 155 foot depth. And they may not be very far from one another, but it tells you where the ledge is. <laughs> So yeah, for the water tables, is is there a drastic change between annually, or is it how long does the water table take basically to go down if it's from one wet year to a dry year? I can really only tell you what I would suggest as a geotechnical engineer, which is the default answer. It depends, <laughs> right? So it's it's, it's all it, it it really depends, right? So it depends on the characteristics of the watershed. Mm -hmm. So some are going to respond more quickly, some are going to respond more slowly. And it depends on just how surcharged the system is versus how long the drought was before or what the prolonged length of a wet period is. So there's a lot of factors that go into this. I, mean, I, I live in Asheville. Mm -hmm. I'm just up the road. There's an old uh, hand dug well at the bottom of my property. That has not, when I was, a, I grew up next door to where I live now, that would typically dry up in May, June, mm -hmm. maybe July at the latest. It flowed all winter. It's still flowing. The grass is still green at the bottom of that, but where it seeps out there. And it, you know, when I was a kid, we'd walk through, it'd be bone dry in August, and now it's can't mow. We've had the four wettest months in like a hundred years. Right. What was it? I'm trying to remember when the um, drought was. That was like three years ago, right? We had, it was short, though. It was very short. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a little six to six. It's not a drought that like goes for years or right. six months it was like it was a six week period right. six right. to eight week period. so yeah I'm, I'm aware of yeah. some of the conditions that folks in the area are battling um i have the benefit of being on the top of the hill and with a walkout basement and i i'm an engineer i made sure we had lots of drainage when we built the house so that i would never have to deal with a wet basement <laughs> because that was you know one of my one of my things um, but where, where were you when I bought my house? Right, but if you live at the bottom of the hill, <laughs> I live it's, high a up. it's a different story. <laughs> yeah. I live high. Right, but if you're if it's flat all around, right? Yeah, it's a secret. So I'm, I'm on a hillside, so there's the water can't build up you know, at my house. But it's just there's there's a lot of factors that affect that, and it's it's hard to point. Like I said, at the beginning, it's very hard to point to one specific thing, right? That that led you led us to a point where we're dealing with the water now. It's usually a culmination of years and years of small changes over time. Um, you know, historically, historically there was a lot more active manipulation, even of surface water, right, by farmers and others maintaining their fields to keep things dry, uh, maintaining ditches, diversions, all sorts. There's all sorts of things that have changed in New England over the last 100, 200 years, where places that used to be dry aren't dry anymore. And I think a part of that is just the changing varied land use. So is it just more houses, more driveways, more impervious, shedding more water? That's probably part of it. Uh, drainage patterns Baptist are different. Baptist Hill, the upper part of Baptist Hill, mm -hmm. hasn't changed in how long, do you think, for housing? Mm -hmm. Houses? Uh, probably a hundred something years. Like the same, there's no new houses. It's all old houses. Yeah. But, well, yeah. Nonetheless, but, yeah. Yeah, nonetheless, so, so, yeah. I, I think uh, yeah, notwithstanding yeah, concerns about groundwater, if there's, a, if there's money to, to oh, hire yeah. engineers to study what's happening on the surface, that's a step ahead. And, and you asked me that question, I have a question, I have a statement, which is let's charge ahead. Yeah, yeah. Good. I agree, I'm ready to. So the, my, the only, looking at the, so the, this, the contract, um, I actually like the way the contract is set up. It's a lump sum fee. Um, it's $56,300 set in six different tasks. Um, and uh, the, I, I get my our principal point of contact would be Nate or Rosalie or both. Uh, probably Rosalie as a day to day, but you know, given my proximity, it All right. is sometimes easier for me to like, attend a meeting like this. Whereas Rosalie's in Connecticut, so it's a bigger ask for her to come up. But you know, she's always willing to make accommodations. Especially she is for Conway. Meetings. She is. Yeah. Um, and uh, and who's the other uh, fellow that signed this? David Leone. So David Leone is one of our senior H&H uh, &H practitioners. So he is a very experienced 
engineer performing hydraulic assessments, hydrologic assessments. Okay. So he's at GCA we have a consultant reviewer process, so all technical documents and proposals, anything that provides an opinion or recommendations or proposals in this case that was a contractual obligation. We have a senior technical person, an expert, if you will, in the field at GCA review that. So it's not just, you know, Rosalie is very capable. I um, like to think I'm a fairly intelligent guy. I can, help, I can figure things out. But we want to make sure that when we're making a recommendation or finalizing a model, that the last pass through at the QA, QC is done by someone who can readily spot potential errors or omissions, data gaps or other things. And they're, so they're involved in the project, not on a day-to-day -day basis, but more as a senior advisory role. So that's who David is in this case. He's a he's a senior technical advisor to the to the project team. Would he be um, a site visitor? I would say that's a problem in my case, just given his geographic location. Okay. okay. So, um, how about I make a motion for the chair to sign the GA, GZA proposal for a hydraulic engineering study? Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Erica nodding your head in agreement? Aye, yeah. Okay. Aye. Okay, so that's unanimous, and I will sign right now. You want to call the Finance Committee? Call it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I have to fill out the date, the <laughs> title, spell your number. name underneath your signature. It's all a matter of public record. Passport, I don't think. <laughs> if, I leave the billing, if, if I leave the billing address blank, then maybe they won't be able to send us the bill at all. Right? <laughs> 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 Clever strategy. I know where to find you. <laughs> so, if there's any other questions, you know, no, don't hesitate you. to call. Thank you. Thank you, Nate. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you, Rosalie. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I make a motion to call the Finance Committee meeting to go order. Second. Join me with the Honorable Select Board of the Town of Conway. Second. Second. All right. All in favor. All in favor. Roy, are you in favor of the meeting Aye. today? All right. <laughs> all right. It's unanimous. We, we can go on. All right. Now you need to uh, approve the minutes. I make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of the Finance Committee meeting of April 1st as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Very unanimous. Thank you. Where would everybody like to start? Draft warrant, but the good news. The whole, I know, which one? It's all good news, Six really. of one, half dozen of the other. Well, there are several decisions that need to be made for the budget. I don't know if folks have had time to think about it, but you need to think about the salary requests and the fold up. Um, so, how about if we go through the draft warrant first? Let me ask you a question. How soon are we going to know the final two pieces of the employee compensation puzzle? Which contractual puzzle? Whenever <laughs> that that's not up to me, that's up to the board. How soon can we schedule how, how soon can we schedule the next executive session to deal with the employee contracts that are still that we still have the two employee the two contracts? Left. And I would I would propose that we deal with them on the same evening. Ooh. And under in the belief that at least one of them would go within a half an hour. Maybe. I'm pretty sure one of them will not go over. Yeah, but um, Well there's how, more yeah, than, how quickly can it there's more than just those. There's also um, the final highway, there's also transfer station. So there are other Right, well those are yeah, but I, I feel I see where you're going. A level of certainty with those more well that those decisions I would 
to, based on these decisions would impact those decisions. Um, and it'd be great. So we... Well... So that, this is just comes to the point, like, maybe now tonight's not the right night to make all of these salary decisions. That is, I guess, my point. Well, that's, well, that's fine. But this is why when we... I'm oh, sorry, let me share this. Um, when the board and the finance committee asked me to come up with these options so yes. that you could look at them. It is good to look at them. So, you know, you've got Article 2 here. You've got Article 2 with a COLA that ranges from 2 to 6%. You've got Article 2 with just the salary requests, and then you've got Article 2 with the salary and COLA. Correct. So, this, so if anybody needs me to review any of that, please let me know, because I'm happy to. Which one are we looking at here? <laughs> that one, honestly, that's just the plain old. Right. Okay, there's no COLAs. There's and nothing in that. Salary last week. Enhancements and of it. Honestly, in the work right okay. now, that's literally just a placeholder because I can't put anything yeah, in there for no, real. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Just for the purposes of clarity. But that is just the straight Article 2 with yeah. nothing else. All right. And the straight Article Two with nothing else is a good, is a fine-looking Article Two. Mm -hmm. May I um, ask you for one more thing? I'm so sorry. Can we see the? Can we have on the next meeting a chart showing the prior years' colas back, back, back dating five years? I can tell you four right now. Last year was two. The one before was three. The one before was five because it was two and a half and two and a half. The one before was zero, and I think the one before was two. I think that's I think that's right. Yeah. Must have taken your ginkgo pills there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, the historical view is a good view to look at, also, and then the national call of race, of course. I can't. Let's say security. security. Oh, yeah. Okay. For what it's worth, I've never uh, seen the call be more than three percent here in Conway. Right, and it, yeah, it's, that's pretty much that's pretty much right. And you know, and the the like for this whole budget process up until three or four weeks ago, um, this was a really terrifying to, to me. It looked like it looked like we were going to be lucky to escape a double digit like straight Article Two increase, and. Uh, and then you know when, when the tech school come in came in with the reduction when when uh, uh, you know Smith Smith vote didn't when no kids were going to Smith all of a sudden things just late broke our way and um, we're you know I, I I would have approached this whole process in a kinder gentler way um, had had this current outlook been apparent earlier. Well, there's no way to know. Exactly. Obviously. But yeah. I will say this, that health um, costs for employees are going up to 8%. So, Great. and I think the fact that we've been three or less all these years is part of the reason why our town salaries are keep dropping in relation to other towns for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have we been non aligned with other towns have other towns been giving higher it depends on the town it's really or is there a it's, quicker it's turnover because obviously you have turnover salaries change okay. right? I, right i know with respect to the other towns in frontier because we talk about our budgets all the time and um they do much greater swings than we do they're much readier to do a zero and they're also readier to do a four or a five but um, that that's so that that's a different like we've always tried to do at least a two even in the worst of years, and we've I, I don't know in in six years in the select board we've never gone above a three even in the best of years, and so I, there's something to be said for both, but, but zeros are tough on people, they really are, um, and and we haven't done and the one year when we had to do that, we came back the next year and um, did a, we made up for it. We made up for it. But, um, but that's, I, I've, I've, always, I've always felt it was unfair to balance your budget 
on employees, but you know, it's the flip side of that is that when we had all those years where inflation was at zero, um, you know, we had like three or four years in a row where inflation was at zero. We were still doing two and, and two and you know two and a half, three each year. Now inflation is not zero, yeah. um, but the but it's it's the math that the town works on is just different than the inflation, the national inflation rate. It's you know it's based on what our new growth is and what the growth in municipal revenue is, and those are grim numbers. So um, just to show you, this is the tab that has everything, the salary requests and the COLA. Mm -hmm. And the highest it would go, this is right here, this column is at a 6% COLA. So the highest the general fund goes is still under 4% and the total is still under, well under 3 So the total we're talking about for the total dollar amount increases See, this is really not that high when you look at it that way. At six percent, twenty-nine thousand dollars for the entire yeah. town. That's the cola part. But that's not the uh, that's not the new salary. salary that's part. but that would the, be based on existing current salary. But levels. that's in here. That's the salary requests are included in here. Okay, gotcha. All right. Yeah. So I'm sorry, they're included in this line right here. So that's what I'm saying. It's a pretty rosy picture. Yeah, and this is not taking into account any new growth. We have a hundred thousand that we can do as a baseline for new growth, correct? Right. So, what, so, so you have the recap in front of you that shows. Yeah. That. So yeah. the right of those of those four squares, the right one is six, then the one six that you're on right now is five, four, three, two. Yeah. Let me see if I can do this a little better for you. By oh, can I just thing. format the wait a minute. Window freeze no. paint. Where is it? Window freeze paint. I know, I just can't find it. I thought that was it. like a dance that you're talking about. I do it all the time and I can't find it right now. So freeze frame. Go to, that's what I thought. I was, um, the song yeah, is in my spring. head now. Yeah, exactly. Page layout? Here, yeah, let me show you something. Do you mind? No, you can drive. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm going to go here and then show more commands. We're going to add it. Oh, it's up there somewhere. It's just being. Yeah, no, it's, it's not, not, it's not yeah. there. So yeah, it is. <laughs> look, it's not here. It would show here if it was. It's a Google thing. I do it all the time. Oh, you do do it all the time. I do it all the time. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I know it's in there that's somewhere. It's under, song. probably under view. Yeah. Same band. Sorry. Under view. It's yeah, it's under, look under view. There it is. Thank okay. you. Okay. So, there you go. Probably get paid the big bucks, right, John? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Two committees. Window freeze paint. Yeah. All right. There I had to say one more thing. Stop that. Wrong way. Whatever. That that's clear. Yeah, it's clear enough. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So in line seventy six, which is the salary line, the general fund line. That includes all the all the salaries. Requested salaries. Requested salaries. Uh, yeah. Or you've applied you've applied the COLA to anybody that is not requested an increase in salary, correct? Correct. Yes. If they've got a if if you get a salary increase, you don't get the COLA on top of it. Right. Right. Um, I'm just trying to find one of the lines here so that I can show. Oh, you know what? You know what? I'm sorry. I take this back. I'm going to have to redo this one because I had to do a lot of futzing with this and I haven't been able to with the plain one. But that, I, I know it's not going to change much more than, than that. It's just to give you an idea yeah, of how. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I can tell you, if I go back to this one, that uh, this portion of it, Uh, Phil, what's the uh, what's the cola that the uh, school district is giving? Um, this is the third year of the contract, and they're at, it's uh, two point zero. Yeah, two. So two, two, two percent step. How much? Two point zero. 
with a call and plus a three percent and a three percent step. And not for everybody. That's the average, though, um, and, and it skews towards the fifteen to twenty year veterans. But um, wow. and there's longevity. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, just so you know, this line right here that's yellow, I said this number will change because this is the additional for uh, employee benefits. Mm -hmm. But I, did, I didn't want to make Jan do all four of those spreadsheets yeah. until we had a COLA percentage that I could work with. Sure. <laughs> so, and, and these were all based, just so you know, on a, on a um, oh, well, I four. Anyway. What it's worth, I think two would be rather stingy. Um, and I, if it was me, I would, uh, you know, I, I'd like to see a three and a quarter, three and a half percent. And I'll tell you why, because even though this, we're looking backwards, we're looking in the rearview mirror. Uh, if you, I mean, they're, you know, folks are faced with costs of things now and in the coming year. So, I mean, it, it seems like, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're not looking at zero percent anymore. No, we're, not. Uh, we're not that much over two and a half as much as they're making a big deal about the, the numbers today. But um, I, I think it's penny wise and pound foolish to, to be, you know, to, to not showing employees that, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're not looking out for them as best we can. That's just my opinion. I actually agree with Roy on the three and a half percent. I was thinking about that myself. Actually, me too. Two point three five is a call that goes from the source of change. Yeah, it was like eight percent last year. Yeah, right? eight percent last year. Yeah, but you know, of course, last year we didn't give that much. Right. So if you're yeah, trying to my my feeling on this, I I, I feel strongly about four percent. I think figure there's not that much difference between three and a half and four yeah. percent. If you're looking at the raw dollars here, you're really splitting hairs. I mean, you're talking about a thousand dollars for the entire budget, based on yeah. based on these figures. Yeah, yeah, that's why that's why I want to see the when Veronica was saying she wants to run those figures. Yeah, well, again. and that's I think that's that's, 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 that's just seems like I thought there'd be a greater dollar spread between those, but um, but um, I could be wrong. I'm wrong a lot lately, but so uh, should I come back with um. A, a single sheet that shows four uh, percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be helpful if you do that. Look at the numbers because something uh, intuitively something doesn't seem. Um, you have to look at the numbers. What about in situations like with the the recommendations from the um, personnel committee for the highway department um, employees? Right. Those are recommendations to the select board for the select board to take into consideration when you. And we did finalize the report. I don't know if that was shared with you. We took it out of draft on Monday night. Oh, and, I haven't and, done that. I apologize. To, but we made the revisions to it. Well, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm wondering. Like we're looking at, you know, the CDL drivers, right? The recommendations did not change right? at all. We just changed. We cleaned up the language in it. So, right. Yeah. So, because because right now, this the the CDL drive commercial drivers are. Um, that was included in Ron's salary request. Okay. And that's what that's what this is. This okay. is the department head salary request. Got it. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. The, so the the, sanu the annual salary requests. Let me go back to. Um, Oh, I know I had to take it out of here. I'm sorry. And it was in his original request, so that's when I had to. Right, but then we asked you to take it out so we can look at it. Oops. All. Yeah, so it, it is in the, in the one with the salad. <clears throat> working with this so much you know I get confused. All right. So you can see this is the jump right here and this is the highway request which includes mm -hmm. the 21 and the 27. And his. Right. So that was in his original ask that was what was in there so I took it out of the. Oh okay you just cut basically cut it out. Mm -hmm. one. 
I cut it out from the major tabs in the in the omnibus, yeah. and then just added it in on this spreadsheet. So mm -hmm. just to kind of keep it clean. So. So that number is actually higher than what personnel has recommended us so far, because we haven't made a recommendation on the superintendent yet. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay, so I'll come and back. What, what was the reason for the Board of Health big increase again? The wages on Board of Health, that they're up 48%? Oh, because what happened last year was <coughs> we had accidentally put in for Lori's time in two different budgets. And so it got taken out of the Board of Health, but now it's back in the Board of Health. So basically, if you can see, it's pretty much what it was the prior year, right? Those two, 22 and then 23, so it's... It looks like a huge jump, but it's really. So. So we'll, we'll get a cleaner. Yeah. Warrant uh, Article Two. Yes. Or, or at least on the that Clean, makes it really yeah. clear about. Let's make sure the calculations are wrong. Yeah. Do you, so you want to see? Let me know what you want to see. Do you want to see a? I wouldn't. Article two with four percent cola only. No. Or article two with the I salary increases. See, this is where it gets a little no. tricky. Well, is okay. So I guess my first question is: Is the board going to go with the, the recommendations of the personnel committee for the those two highway department line items? Um, I, you know, I, with it, per, I, we haven't. But personally, right. my own personal feelings is that this is with with the numbers that we are at. I was okay with the department heads' recommendations, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and that as a place to start. Mm -hmm. And um, I yeah. think the personnel committee's numbers were pretty in line with that. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and that yeah. you know we can, so, you know, and, but but that when we do, rather than do like pe I wanted like. Some parts of the personnel committee work product, like the the uh, uh, job descriptions, to do you know as they come off the press, let's right. bring them into the fold. Right. But right. the the, sal the salary report. stuff would make sense to just deal with it all at once rather than um, it w whatever. And so that when that you know your salary review is going to take some time for all the departments, and that maybe next year might be the time to really bring that into the process. But for now. We'll, we're dealing with the recommendations of the department heads, which I think um, are in line with what the committee mm -hmm. was thinking about to a great extent anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just trying to make it easy for Verity to get us what we need. Yeah, we want to go if we're, if we're saying doing. yes, do the numbers with the, with the highway department yeah. hourly rates that we propose. Yeah. That makes it easier for you. So yeah. then you can just assume that, that that's done, right? Well, no, because then I have to back out the request for Ron. Well, but that hasn't been discussed. I know, but yeah, it was no. in there because I mean, that been, was the request. Oh. So that means I'll have to do a third. Oh, or a fifth. third iteration. <laughs> yeah. When do we need to have a final? And we have to get this budget, Article 2, especially voted on by when? Uh, the June 22nd is supposed to be the vote out. April 22nd. For the warrant. We gave ourselves an extra just in case week, but the 22nd would really be good mm -hmm. if we could hit that okay. target. Okay. All right. And by then, this, and you'll have deliberated on superintendent position, salary, uh, or, you know, and uh, trying to think of all the other things that could affect Article 2. Um, well, it's basically the request. So we have uh, the town of my request, the police department request, the highway request, and my request for the transfer station. Those are the four that need to be All right. discussed. And the outside of that, the other other hourly wage positions. Then we're looking at the cola of you know four percent, five percent, three percent, whatever. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So is that helpful for you in terms of giving you parameters? Clear as mud? <laughs> I'll come back next week yeah. with uh, with the 4% COLA. And Eric and Chris, are you available within the next week to do an executive session? Um, I, yeah. 
Any any dates in particular? Um, no, I think I'm generally free in the evenings. Okay. <laughs> Next week up good. Next week. Next Monday is Patriots Day. Right? I have a meeting Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. <laughs> we don't need you there. Excuse me? Okay, we do. Um, so we're looking at the 16th? Well, the 16th is the select board. Yeah, that's already our That's meeting. already our meeting. So we have to look. We, we would have to wait again with the select board on the 17th and Wednesday. Well, the 17th is the personnel committee meeting at 530. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Actually, we're already out of this week. It has to be next week. It was Wednesday of the evening. We couldn't do this. We couldn't do Friday. Um, it would be Saturday or next week. We could eat this Saturday. I'm talking about the 17th. I know you are. Oh, oh, oh. But the, the idea, the, the, the hope was that oh. we could have the 16th be a more pro productive thing if we had all of the numbers finalized before then, but we're not going to. No. no. Because of you. <laughs> uh, just joking. Just I, joking. I, I could do it if you guys are available on um, Thursday the 18th. I do have another meeting, but I can just not go to that one. I'm available on the 18th. Erica, the 18th? I'm, yeah, the 18th works. There's a school committee that night. Oh, oh dear. Is. There is? There's a Conway school committee 16. Oh, no. Was that just scheduled in the past day? Because April is our joint meeting. I mean, they have to reschedule it because we didn't have a quorum. Just Conway. The other three towns. No, this was one that was, says last touch by me. So this is what I pulled off probably two months ago to put on our calendar just to coordinate. Yeah. Um, there's no regularly scheduled school committee meeting. So you want to in, do the in April? In April, besides the sixth, which, which was the yesterday, um, or the ninth, whatever, yesterday, ninth. Uh, but now that you said that, I'm all nervous, so I don't know. Well, I, I wouldn't have made it up. I know you wouldn't have made it up. <laughs> if, you, if you would have made it up, it, it would have been funnier or more interesting. Um, I must have put it there for a reason. I know. <laughs> Um, so tentatively the 18th, is there another day that we could pick just in case it is a school committee? Well, Monday's the holiday, Tuesday is your regular meeting, yeah. Wednesday is the personnel committee. Yeah, Thursday, Thursday is, is sustainability, but that one I could... Is it Friday just in case? Yeah. We gotta do it. Then. I could do Friday. Friday's okay for me. I can right. do it. I can do the Thir Monday. Thursday if we can. Friday if we can. All right. What I mean, time? Friday's Five? Not, yeah, Friday is nobody's choice. But <laughs> no. um, but it's got to be done before that Monday. You may cry. I thought that was executive session. Was yeah. Executive session? Yeah, these are executive sessions yeah. to finalize so the last that, two that contracts. Time, so, we're on, so we're on track to meet again uh, at the finance committee on the 22nd of April, is that? Our next meeting is the 16th. For the finance committee? With the finance committee. We, we haven't discussed the, the warrant. Yeah. Do you want to go through the warrant? Or are you, I mean, the warrant is always. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. go through all the Article three. 3 and beyond. Let's, yeah. Let's, okay. let's finish look at the money. Look and at the money articles. Yeah, articles. But just so you know, the next two meetings with finance, the joint with select board and finance, are April six, Tuesday, April sixteenth, and Monday, April twenty second. And twenty second, we're expected right. to vote on these. We're hoping articles. to vote. If push comes to we, shove, we'll do it on Monday the twenty ninth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, that's at six thirty on the sixteenth. Yes. Thank you. So Article 3 is boilerplate. This is our lawyer's favorite article. Yeah. <laughs> um, article 4 is the school phone system. 5 is the video school video surveillance system. And 6 is the mini splits for the school, which is um, their money, or the money that our money 
which is their money, which is our money again. So I have a question regarding the uh, capital improvements, the uh, phone system. Was there any further? No, I still have to do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have a lot to do. And just so you know, um, I, this is reflecting what you had recommended, which I like that it be cleaner that we do each of these three coming straight from Cap, um, the yeah, school stable, stabilization. Stable, 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 yeah. stable, and then yeah. I just yes. added them up and we're transferring 53000 from Yeah, we'll cash do, we'll do the shuffle. Yeah. We did the shuffle. And I, I mean, that's, the pur that's the purpose of that capital, the, the grammar school stabilization count. And yeah. That's yeah. So these three all go together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, the four, four, five, six. Four, yeah, four. And then seven right. is yeah. to re up, re -up yeah. the, yeah. the fund. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fire truck is straightforward. Um, I would just add some language that says. Per expected purchase in 2028 as opposed to just 2020. Okay, sure. Just clarify it for people. Remember, the people, sure. we're not the only ones reading this. So. Article 9, 10, and 11, I still need to get actual, like, closer numbers to actual cost. That's on me also. So I have four articles oh, pending geez. my review. <laughs> <laughs> so you can, you can uh, change it to the maximum of whatever these numbers are. You mean up to? Oh, well, yeah. we have the, no, we have the vote of. of, of Solid number. We can't say. Well, we can vote it to be up to a maximum of a hundred thousand. No, we, no we're exceed. transferring from free cash. We need to, we need a solid number to transfer. Well, yeah, that, yeah. Right. Yeah, but we well, can vote, we can vote it so that we, we, we can work it around that. We've I think. Let me look into that. Whether you can yeah. do the not to exceed. I don't see why you. Don't no, we, okay. We've done it before. We couldn't. Yeah. I think we say not to exceed instead of up yes. to. But. We check with uh, legal counsel to see what they are proper. Right? Yeah. Um, Same with Article 10 alone. Yeah. So what are we taking out of the general stabilization fund? Out of general stabilization? Nothing. But we're putting 50000 in. Yeah, I wanted to put more in because if you see that little side note says target is 5% of the budget, which it would be $347,630. So Adding in 50, we're only getting it up to 200. So that's what Mike, Mike Achala has advocated for that? It's one of the DLS best, best practices. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, That's yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. Educate me on what is the general stabilization versus, you know, the capital stabilization. Honestly, we haven't used general stabilization since I've been here. I guess I might call it kind of more, not a rainy day fund, but it's kind of so like our emergency back operating stuff. Costs. Yeah, That's exactly what it is. It's 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 a a rainy day. Day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to have town meeting two-thirds vote to take money out of it yes. but it's nice to have your little bank account that Real. you know that's okay. just for the dls recommends it be no yes. less than three percent and then more than five percent of the yeah. other appropriate portion of the budget yeah um okay so for this article 12 13 15 14 you've done 15 is just the last year of paying our paving note for shelburne falls road mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah 16 is the study, um, the okay, sustainability okay, committee. You go through it in a speedy way. Go, go, you go. Was that a do it or don't do it? No, do it. <laughs> go, go, go. Okay. He slowed you down. He slowed you down. Mark's waiting for cake over there. All right, all right, you're right. We're, we're modeling good behavior for that. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. that Article 16 was put forth by the sustainability committee. Um, hopefully, it will be. Then this is their recommendation to the select board, so hopefully the select board will be submitted. Um, yeah, you can probably take out well vetted. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it just raises more questions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Thank you. Uh, okay, bye. Oh, darn it, I wanted a poorly vetted one. <laughs> okay, great. Um, and so and the idea behind that is just to get a, a, a serious survey and inventory of everything we've got in town and start giving us some ideas of what savings we could get if we got rid of certain street lights. So. Actually, that language might be fine-tuned even more. That's not a... That's fine, but yeah, yeah that, whatever. That, well, yeah, tell that language doesn't scream out, no. please support me. Cost optimized yeah, uh, solution. Yes, yes. Let's do some more jargon. Um, yeah. So, and, and town, town council does have this in our hands, too. Oh, yeah. good. Um, Article 17 is just our annual one, and actually part of the uh, Municipal uh, Empowerment Act that they're talking about is to um, not have to do this every year unless the limit changes. 
but right now we have to confirm the limit. Oh, and that's all we're doing is just confirming the limits. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? I may have to add one in here. I think I need to add in transfer station. I gotta ask him about that again. Okay. We've already, um, I mean, the finance committee has already been discussed. Yeah, it's good. The okay. involving from the ball like this one. Um, Article 18, the opioid one, this is, we did vote as a town to put it into a stabilization fund because that's how it was recommended to us originally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now they've changed their mind. Instead, it should, said it should go into a special revenue fund because okay. then it's easier right. for us to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. much better. Makes, yeah. yeah, makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yep. Yeah. So. Um, then there's the transferring of $20,000 to OPEB. We've yeah. been doing this every year. Yeah. I don't know if anybody wants to discuss at some point the amounts, and I I have that on the list here. So right now we have just shy of 130,000. It would be just shy of 150,000 after mm -hmm. town meeting. What's the order to recommend? Hmm? What's our order to recommend? I you know what with that one I mean it's like a million dollars or something. No, well, no, no. Our, that's, our, that's, that's a, a total liability. That's, that's, that's actual liability. Oh, you mean, you mean yeah. how much we have? What's the order okay. to recommend our balance? That's something in the right. annual right. audit 20, that they twenty grand address. a year. They, they, the last time it was in these discussion, yeah. twenty thousand a year is adequate. Yeah, we should review that. You'll never, we'll never have an auditor say it's good because you know theoretically the actuarial yeah. liability is multitude higher. Yeah. Okay, then we've got the partial debt for the yeah. highway garage facility. Yeah. Straightforward. Um, I don't, I think we have to do this every year. It's actually supposed to be, I think, every three year, Article 21, mm -hmm. but we just do it every year because we don't want to forget that it's the third yeah. year yeah. we have to do it. That's yeah. also town council. Yeah. Um, the reval in Article 22 went from 5,000 to 6,000 this year. They save every year because on the reval year, then they have a big pot of money. So they just put aside a certain amount uh, every year. Yeah. Field library, that goes up a minuscule amount every year. It's kind of like the minimum yeah. that they need to. It's the absolute minimum to the penny. Yeah. Article 24, I put in there. It's not something we have to do right, right now, but I didn't want to forget. <laughs> Um, which is because at special town meeting, we, uh, the town voted to borrow. Yeah, yeah. And at some point, it doesn't have to be now, but at some point, we have to. We may want to. Well, we're going to want to vote to rescind or, that. Or so borrow. Or borrow. <laughs> but so that's up to you know you all. I just wanted to not forget about that. Well, what, what, is there a sunset on the uh, approval from the state? There's got to be a termination yeah. point. A sunset the, on the approval. The disaster relief. Oh, yeah, what oh, is the money? What is the money? No. Use it or lose it. What is there a deadline? No. It's gotta be. On the no? disaster relief, no. No, they no. just they gave us no. that and said no. use, right. use it for this yeah. purpose. Yes. And, yeah. We'll discuss it next year at this time. Like the check cleared already. <laughs> okay. okay. It's in the bank. <laughs> Twenty five, I have to see if we actually still need to have that in there that I'm hoping was just a one off. I thought we voted that as well. No, that was a town council thing too. She wants that in there. All right. Yeah, I just didn't know if it was every year or if yeah, you didn't. Believe it, so. Maybe. Okay, so 26 and 27 are articles submitted by town council yeah. mm -hmm. relative yep. to the North Polo Bridge. Yeah. We have not gotten anything from the Community Preservation Committee yet, however, they, got to come they have it. approved the pickleball courts yeah. and announced 150000 so I put that in there. And then there is a citizen's petition that was submitted and validated. Mm -hmm. um, I love it. So, and that's actually, that's that. It's not actually that. It's very famously, uh, Buckland did that a few years ago. Gave 16-year-olds the right to vote. For, 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 during this meeting, there was like all these 16-year-olds that came and said, we want to vote at town meeting. And, and they, how many actually showed up? Never. Never a single one. Uh, really? Like, like, yeah. Fair enough. I was talking to you about this like a couple months ago. So yeah. I'm so glad someone did this because that was something yeah. that I was... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really cool. Yeah, you mentioned um, it in one cool. of the select board yeah, meetings and then all of a sudden Lori gave you the petition. And, and I was like, wow, well, there you go. improved their civics programs. And really, if all the towns, the five towns... I don't think 18-year-olds are smart enough to vote. Right? No, they yeah. are. They are. But it's, well, it's there's a lot of interesting, you know, there's a lot of interesting rationale for, for doing it. I, you know, I was following, I read this today and I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And I read a major reaction like, wait, are you really want 16 year olds voting? And then it's like, that's well, not municipal. And you know what? You need, you need engagement. 
and it gives a good excuse for the schools to develop their civics programs. I was thinking, and you know, go. It, to me, it's like a no-brainer. Get them involved early. Well, yeah. one of the things I've had, and it's a, it's a low-risk maneuver. Well, there's student yeah. council. Yeah. And, uh, my thought is, you get the vote in town elections, you vote in student council. <laughs> Kristen Gordon and I have talked about the idea of having a mock town meeting at the grammar school run by the kids and maybe getting our moderator and they'd come up with their own articles and just kind of because that is an awesome idea our town business well, takes place in their gym you know what if we <laughs> i keep thinking if i were 16 and i went to town meeting i'd never go to another one <laughs> <laughs> except that we gave out cookies and you know <laughs> two years ago i mean what's like sure. watching paint dry <laughs> it's always about the cookies well, we used to have a bake sale. I don't know. If we should mandate the PTO have a bake sale. Yeah. All right. So, I uh, this looks fine to me. I mean, as, as is. Well, some yeah. some tweaking. It'll and be then, tweaked by town council. And then we'll yeah, see. No. We'll see about the festival of the hills inclusion. Yes. Or whether that. So that we are. Oh, okay. That's something that's, we're dealing. with. Bernie and I are dealing with in the next. Okay. Um, and the immediate future. What is since that's coming under the umbrella of the town again? If possible. Okay. If possible. We're trying to get over the legal. There's there's a financial bump in the road. Yeah. Thank you, Do. Thank you, Department of Revenue, um, and we're seeing what we, okay. how we okay. can yeah. navigate that. Yep. Um, All right. Is it possible for the to move the, the uh, meeting on the 22nd to uh, the 23rd? I might have a problem making that meeting. I, I, I have to be there. It's Mother's Day that week. Or does it have to be the 22nd? 22nd. Yeah, April 22nd. April 22nd. April 22nd, yeah. It's the Monday. So Tuesday? I don't know. What does the calendar look like on the It's 23rd? just conservation on the 23rd, so they can meet over there. Okay. Erica, are you free on the 23rd instead? Um, I believe so. Let me. Yes. Okay. I am. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm available. Roy, can you be available on the 23rd? Uh, what? What? Uh, this Tuesday. I, I, I lost my video here, but uh, we're talking April 23rd, yes. Tuesday, right? Yeah. Okay, just, just give me a minute here, and I'll tell you. And that would be the final uh, approval yes, of it. This yes. thing. Uh, Thank you. Thanks, Roy. Thank you very much. And uh, Chris and Phil, you should be available. Yep. Okay. No. Thank you all. Thank Great. You. Well, that was the easiest switching. <laughs> that would be the final. That would be the day of final approval of all Behold. things town yes. meeting B. Yes. Um, so that. Um, all right. So, so it's at six thirty. For, for you, guys, you yes. yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, actually, that's up to you. If you want to make it just because that's the final, if you want to start at six and just go through all the, because you're going to be voting on all the articles. I mean, that's up to you when you want to start that. We should still do it. That's half an hour guy. You never know what's okay. going to come up between now and then. It always well, seems to be true. something. And that's true. On that note, while I, I do appreciate that we allow a lot of time for public input um there's others here who are waiting ex excessively for their meeting to start and i think tighter adherence to the, the time frame would be most appreciated yeah roger that um yeah this was a big deal though but yeah i know i, yeah, I understand yeah. i understand but you know at some point you know it's like town meeting the moderators gotta say okay we've had enough commentary here let's Let's move this forward. On that note, I make a motion to adjourn the finance committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Roy. Okay. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right. For the select board, do we have anything not anticipated? Where do you have? No. The town administrator update, we've all read. Uh, it's a fine update. It is a fine update. Don't need to give a short shrift, um, but uh, on to the select board member comments concerned of, of, of do you, is there anything you want to add to that? Go, go play. 
It was a good update. Uh, okay, I'll go through that. We'll go through the highlights real quick. Okay. That's okay. Don't. Had an MPP planning to... committee meeting. Um, the the Barlesbury Bridge thing. The Council of Aging picked up the owl, the iPad, the twenty five iPads for the for the uh, um, for the lottery. The Sustainability Committee submitted their warrant article and uh, met met about the memorial bench. Um, Ann Gobi's weekly meeting with Sean Cronin from DOR. Um, discussion of the Municipal Empowerment Act, and you went to Inspector General Jeffrey Shapiro in Irving, where you could ask questions about procurement. There, see? You rolled on that one. I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, uh, now we have a letter from Keith Morris, the environmentalist, uh, the environmental. Um, uh, about the rail, the railroad spraying pesticide along the railroad, Asplund Railroad Division, for the Berkshire and Eastern Railroad. <coughs> um, and seeing as it was sent to us, and there's one railroad going through town, we kind of know where that is. That's in the Bartles Ferry, Ferry General vicinity, and then across right along the river, spraying that stuff yeah, right exactly. on the river, and they. They listed the name brand of the pesticide, herbicides, Aquanaut, OpenSite, Polaris AC, and MSO Extra. And it will be applied by a track mounted rail truck. And, uh, yeah, to control nuisance vegetation in the ballast portion of the railroad right away and around switches and signals. So, really, that's actually probably not that bad of an idea. Um, uh, um, announcements. We, our next meeting is April 16, which is here, which would be next Tuesday. Tuesday. Happy Patriots Day to everybody. Yes, Monday is a Patri is the Massachusetts own holiday because we need our own holiday. And uh, with that, motion to adjourn. Second. Um, all in favor? Erica? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you, everybody.